This is a GitHub workflow on local development on a Mac. So um, there's a number of different ways you could set this up. I am currently doing this with local by flywheel for my server environment, GitHub desktop for um, setting up GitHub and using GitHub, and Visual Studio Code for actually writing the code. So you can really use whatever you want for your text editor. Um, you can set up another um, a, a different kind of local environment using uh, MAMP, uh, which will get you all, excuse me similar setup. Um, local by Flywheel is designed specifically for local development on WordPress sites, which is why I like it for this application. Um, if you know you're only going to be working in WordPress, it's perfect. Um, my uh, my environment over on my Ubuntu machine is, you know, it's not always WordPress, so I can't just work from local. Um, but the great thing is, you can basically from local just hit add a local site, and boom, it'll it'll put it together for you. You don't have to do any of the five minute WordPress install. I know we're saving five minutes, right? But it saves you five minutes. Uh, then you can also, if you have heights, if you have heights, if you have sites hosted on Flywheel, which uh, we've done the whole Flywheel partnership thing, so a lot of our sites are, we can pull them down just by connecting to Flywheel. So this Planting Pal is actually a staging site on our um, hosting environment. So I've pulled that down, and now I have local development here on my Mac that I can I can work with the um, the code base. So. You'll see there's a lot of options over here, and uh, you're basically probably not going to touch them. But um, you can get into the WordPress admin, or you can go view the site. Those will pull it up for you, so you don't have to try to figure out where it is and get the right URL and all that good stuff. Um, something that's going to be really important when you try to set up your GitHub repository is this right here. So the path to where it's at. Um, I've got a thousand finder windows open. But um, yeah, you can click this. It'll bring you right to the path, which can be helpful for things like this. Um, let's see. Once I get into Plant Pal, it's apps, public. I'm sorry, app, public. And then this is your standard WordPress install. Uh, I go to WP Content. And uh, like I said we in previous video, uh, we develop a code base locally anything that is database related we do on the staging site. So I am working on the code base of a plugin here and that plugin is called unsurprisingly planting pal. So uh, I'm actually going to delete this to show you how you link everything up. Uh, so this actually came down when I first pulled the site down that came down with it and uh, it's not a github repository. So there's uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I find the easiest way to be to just delete it and clone the GitHub repository right to that spot. So this is saying, hey, uh, I can't find Planting Pal. I had everything linked up, and now it's all upset. Um, I'm just going to remove it so you can see what this would look like if you had just gotten started. So I can uh, add an existing repository from my hard drive. So if there was one there, I could point it right to it, um, create a new repository on my hard drive, or I can clone a repository from the internet. So I'm going to do that because it's on my GitHub account, and I'm going to get Planting Pal. Choose. I don't want documents. I want not that either. Here we go. Okay, so I want to get out to my Michael Dion folder, and then it's local sites, Plant Pal, app, public, WP content, plugins. So I just need to get to the plugins directory and then from here I can just click that, clone it back down. And now I'm I'm back in business. Now if I go back over to my um what do you call it? My text editor. Um if you had just gotten started, this might actually look like close folder. This might just look like this. And I would come here again, and I would grab this Planting Pal folder, just drop it right over here, and now I've got the whole folder. I can get into whatever I need to. Um, and this is kind of a weird mashup of work we're doing and work somebody else is doing. So um, let's just see conversion. We haven't really done much with this. According to this, Kyle added it, Relic 159. Uh, this is the GitLens uh, extension 
gives me these nice little lines here to see who added what. Um, Kyle didn't actually write any of this. This is something another developer wrote that we're kind of taking over, but um, Kyle's the one who first published it. So uh, there is that small caveat when it comes to the uh, the Git Lens details or the GitHub details even, is um, not always will it be correct if you didn't start with a GitHub repo. So um, I'm just gonna add a line that's a comment, add a comment. And now when I go back to the GitHub desktop, I, oh, I should save this first. <laughs> uh, when I go back to the GitHub desktop, you'll see it's got the uh, green area here saying add a comment. So it keeps track of the changes you make. Um, next, if I were to be done or at a point where I say, okay, I want to commit, um, our, our rule is commit early and often. Um, a commit, again, is local to your computer. So if I commit now and I just say, uh, finished adding comment, add support for having a comment. Okay, so now I commit that. That's not pushed up to, to the, the central repository. That's just local on my machine. But it's kind of the like, all right, I finished that piece and now I'm gonna go work on something else. Or I've gotten to a point where I'm I think I'm satisfied with the way this works and I want to commit to it so that I can pull back. Um, all right, and now we'll listen to my wife talking about her groceries. Um, so anyways, if I want to be able to roll back to that point exactly, then I just make a commit. It's, it's essentially like making a save point. Um, after I was, I'm ready to push those up, I would just hit push origin and it would push it up and we could go to GitHub and and actually see those changes up here. And if we're working on a branch, merge it back in. So our general rule of thumb is whenever you're working on a new feature, um, you name the you create a new branch and you name it based on the feature that you're working on. Um, where is my planting pal? There it is. So, for example, um, you know, I might be working on create single store page, which would be issue number 21, and I would then go and uh, in GitHub, actually we didn't have the numbering system set up on these yet, so it's just called store items at the moment. So I would create a new pull request, and I kind of already got one in, in the works here. So I can get into this, and this is um, telling me that it has conflicts and it needs to be merged, uh, or it needs to be edited. So before I can merge this, I need to resolve the conflicts. I've already taken care of a couple of them, but uh, here it's actually got one conflict on this Ajax-functions PHP. Um, this is an easy, easy conflict to resolve. So right here, it's store items, that's the branch name, versus master. So I have nothing, and Kyle has this whole slew of stuff. Now normally, it's smart enough to work through these, but I had done some things and done some done some merges with this in such a way that now it's a little out of sync, and it, it do, it's not sure if I intend for this to be empty or if I intend for it to have this function here. So now it's my job as the... Uh, like the git master here to figure out what's supposed to be here. These are usually pretty easy. Now the way to resolve the conflicts is actually pretty basic. You just delete those little carrots or equal signs and now it considers that resolved. So since I know Kyle added this function and we need it, um, I just deleted everything around it and left the, left the code. So I'm gonna mark that as resolved. Now this one is a little bit more in depth because it's got uh, some CSS. My branch here has a rule and a bunch of comments. Um, that's the that's our general rule of thumb. We want to have two comments for every line of, of CSS. Um, then you've got Kyle's branch that has a whole bunch of rules. Um, you can also see if you look up here that this has three conflicts in it. So this is the first of the, of the three. <sighs> 
This could be any number of solutions. Number one, it could be one or the other. The, uh, number two, it could be both. Or number three, it could be some combination of both. Um, and in really rare cases, it could be neither. So that's why it's important to know the project really well when you when you have somebody who's this is their job to manage these merges. Um, and it's also not expected that that person is always going to be able to merge every conflict. Uh, you may have to reach out to the developers, which is why the, uh, the blame feature exists, um, which I can't show you right here at the moment, but uh, we'll get into that in another video. Um, so the blame feature sounds like it's to blame people, but it's actually just to help you identify who you need to talk to about this code. Um, so I happen to know that we actually want both of these. I wrote this style and uh, Kyle wrote all these styles. None of them conflict with each other and we want them all. So I'm just going to delete all of the markup and there it is. Now I happen to know if I just scroll a little bit I'll see that other uh, issue or I can hit next up here and it'll bring us down to it. So. Um, here we go. This is another one of those simple ones. A big empty spot versus a spot with some code. Chances are I want the spot with the code. Not always. There are times when you have actually deleted stuff and you do that on purpose because it's terrible code. Um, luckily, this is not one of those times. So, uh, da -da -da. Let's see if we can get a more interesting conflict here. Ooh, this is a really good one. So you got to watch out for these because what it's somehow gotten confused by the positioning of this closing curly bracket. Um, so if I were to say I do want Kyle's code and I'm not sure what's going on with this, I could conceivably end up doing something like this. Jeez, Kyle. There it is. So this is dangerous, of course, because somehow it's got this curly curly bracket as something I added and as something Kyle added, and it's possible that you could end up with both of them here. You don't need both of them, and um, luckily we're super, super uptight about our... Um, indenting so it's easy to tell that this is a problem but it it's not always if, if the indenting was a little messed up and that one was in there it would be tough to say like oh yeah we definitely do or don't need that um, but it's easy enough if you go through it's a short function you can identify open open we now have two open now we're down to just one open back up to two open down to one open down to none open and then this would throw an error so um, one of those needs to go away, and um, that is one of the trickiest things that I've found with GitHub is that sometimes it struggles with those curly brackets, particularly if somebody maybe accidentally deleted one while they were moving some stuff around and put it back, then it can get really confused about which branch it belongs to and assume that it's one or the other. Um, so keep your eye out for that. Make sure that your code still functions as you, as you go. All uh, right, so mark that as resolved, and we're just pushing through all of this. So we could keep working through these, but you're going to get most of that. Most of the conflicts that you're going to face are going to be things like that. Um, if two people are working on the same file in the same set of functions at the same time, then you could have conflict. Uh, in a team of our size, we're not really seeing a whole lot of that, but that will then be whoever's the Git master, which is a term I don't think exists, but that would then be uh, that person's job to identify which code should stick around. Um, in most cases, with the way that we've got things set up where we're working on separate branches and merging them back into master, there's very little conflict because each branch is kind of its own feature set. Um, so unless we're working on the same feature set together, we're not really working in conflict. So um, overall, pretty simple to, uh, to merge these. 
the the biggest thing is when you're not really sure what the code is doing and you want to actually have a conversation with the developer who wrote it and figure out where the conflict is and what's actually supposed to happen. Um, and sometimes two people will write basically the same function and you want to figure out, well, which one is the most efficient. So uh, that's it for today's lesson in um, GitHub merging. And uh, I hope that this is helpful. If not, uh, feel free to ask me lots of questions.